Living in Asia makes it very difficult to participate in the crowdfunding scene around Cabo books. You know, they're very expensive to begin with. Then you throw in like 40 or $50 shipping and it's like, no boss, I really can't afford to support a lot of these books. And by the time they get here, it ends up being months and months and months after everyone else has received the book. So I'm not even really a part of the conversation. So me personally, I am skipping out on comic book crowdfunding for the most part. I don't participate and I'm not all that interested due to all the unnecessary lame ass drama that surrounds it. And you know me, I'm the DFL, right? The drama free life guy. So I just, I'd stick around, stay out of it. I don't want to cover it because no matter what you say, somebody will take offense and twist your words. And next thing you know, uh, people are harassing you for a couple of days and annoying the crap out of you. And you're like, do I really want to have to block this guy? He seems like he's normal every other day, but would you talk about crowdfunding? The guy loses his fucking mind. So for the most part, I stay out, but there's always an exception to the rule. And one of those is Rich Johnston from Bleeding Fool making an ass of himself. And that is pretty much what has happened this week. Eric July came out with I Saw him Number One, been fully funded and well beyond that into the twos of millions of dollars with over 30,000 backers, I believe. Very huge success. So Rich Johnson decided to write an article about this. And he just made himself look really stupid, taking really stupid little jabs. You can see this guy is such a petty person that he can't even, you know, appreciate the success that Eric July has created for himself. He obviously worked very hard. He's been building his YouTube channel for like 10 years. He's associated with a lot of big platforms out there. And when he decided to launch his book, it's an enormous success. And you can't have a black guy that is not ultra liberal being successful in the world today. So Rich Johnson had to take some shots and... Listen, I got to call this stuff out because he makes himself look so stupid. Let's talk about what Rich Johnson from Bleeding Fool had to say about old Eric July and the Ripiverse. Eric D. July is a libertarian contributor to the conservative network Blaze TV, founded by Glenn Beck. And when he had a comic book to crowdfund, they were happy to highlight this to their readers and viewers and to label it as non-woke. Woke is defined as being aware of injustice in society, especially but not limited to racism which doesn't seem anything that most people would be opposed to, especially superhero comics, which would seem to be all about fighting injustice. But I guess, welcome to the internet. So this here is what we call gaslighting. He's trying to like say that he's more, I guess, sensitive. And he's more against the white guy in England, is more against racism than J Eric July, the black guy. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Yes, I'm certain. Eric July is just real pro-racism. And that's what promoting the book and being a part of Blaze TV is all supposed to be. He's really letting you know deep on the inside that Eric July is a big flaming racist. Get out of here with that stuff. It's so stupid. When you have these stupid white liberals like a like a Rich Johnson sit there and try and chastise a black man who knows more about racism, I imagine, than Rich Johnson will ever know in his lifetime. It's just it, You just can't help but laugh at it and be like, you are the biggest dipshit on the block. I have people come out of my chair and be like, you, sir, are a xenophobe, as if I'm I'm scared of foreigners. You know, that's what I believe that's what xenophobe is. Or you, sir, are a racist. And I'm going, I am the worst xenophobe in the history of the world. I literally live in Asia. I don't know any white people here. I don't talk to any of them. I think there's three other white guys in my town, and I've never spoken a word to any of them. Everybody I talk to is Asian. They're brown. My kids are brown. My wife is brown. Yet somehow I'm a racist because I'm not woke enough. And I think that's really what Eric July is trying to promote, promote about his book. Being woke doesn't mean that you don't like racism. Everybody hates racism. That's not something that's isolated to one side or the other. Pretty much everybody in this world, except for scumbags, know that racism is bad, that racism is terrible, and they don't support it. But most normal people, they have a, a sound mind and can actually look at facts and, and circumstances, don't think race is responsible for every bad thing that happens in this world. They don't think the sexual orientation of a person is the sole defining characteristic of them. And that's why people hate woke culture. It's not that they support racism or, oh, I just hate gays, so I'm against the woke culture. No, no. People that have really bought into woke culture are so far gone past reality and just using any shred of common sense that you can't relate to them anymore. And all they talk about is this person's marginalized and this person's marginalized. And you take away any sort of agency from a person because you solely define them by like their physical characteristics or who they want to sleep with and stuff like that. Whereas normal people like you and I, we know that people are defined by their actions. 
yes, there could have been something that happened bad to a black person, but it doesn't have to mean that it was racist. And it might have had nothing to do with the fact that they were black. They could have just done something stupid, put themselves in a bad spot, and then something bad happened. Now, obviously, bad things happen to good people, too, but it doesn't always have to be about that. People that are woke are so consumed with social justice and marginalized communities that it's the only thing that they can think of. They no longer think about people as actual people defined by their actions. And that's why people hate woke culture. And that's why a lot of people are turning on mainstream entertainment because it's being forced down your goddamn throat every chance they get. There's absolutely agendas all over the place. If you watch entertainment for children nowadays, you'll be shocked. You'll be flabbergasted by the amount of material that are specifically LGBTQ plus to sit there and try and influence your little children as little as like five or six years old. It is so strange and normal people hate that shit. That is what Eric July is talking about. Eric, Eric July is not sit there and, and, and flagging out and signaling, oh, he's just pro-racism. No, he's just anti the absolute woke mob, the cancel culture and everything that comes with it because it's absolutely insane and everybody hates it. Rich Johnson continues after the gaslighting session. The non-woke label saw the story picked up by Fox News and the New York Post, which have helped spread the cry further. And the revenue, already in six figures, soon went into seven figures. Almost 30,000 pre-orders worth over $2.5 million. That is a remarkable achievement for a new comic book property right off the bat, no matter who promoted it. Though the price of a 96-page comic of $35 plus $10 shipping might seem a bit on the high side, if it wasn't for their virtue signaling possibilities, if Eric D. July wants to create a long-running collectible comic book universe for the Ripperverse, he might want to try and bring some economic scale into the play or risk bankrupting his followers. Eric July has a pre-existing relationships with these entities. I believe he's already bid on those programs before. And if you were creating a, you know, a platform, you were creating a comic book, wouldn't you use your pre-existing relationships with platforms that have even bigger audiences than your own? Wouldn't you want to mobilize those and maybe get the word out that there's something out there that you'd like to make some money on? So that's absolutely smart. I don't remember Rich Johnson complaining when DC Comics went out on essentially a publicity stunt making John Kent Superman and then calling him Superman so everyone thinks Superman is gay now and got national coverage. Whoa, probably more coverage than on Fox News and Eric July to get the word out and it just happened to bump the the sales of the comic book shocking these things aren't new people have done this in the past but of course rich johnson's got to do a little uh concern trolling for the backers of the ripperverse he's gonna they're gonna go bankrupt paying 45 dollars a year to support this comic book or quarterly or however often he plans on crowdfunding these comic books i'm not sure what his release schedule is going to be yet he has no problem with the insane rising prices from DC and Marvel that are going around. Look at the prices that people are paying for DC comics these days. And most of them absolutely suck. People are looking for an alternative because DC and Marvel aren't really providing it. It's $35 a lot of money for a 96 page comic book. Yes, I think so. But if people are willing to pay it, that is their prerogative and those are his customers and they're supporting him. And for Rich Johnson to imply that he's trying to like bankrupt him is absolutely insane. But you got a concern troll. What are you doing? He's going to ruin your finances supporting his comic book. Eric D. July also told The Blaze that I'm not in the business of lecturing people and telling people exactly how to live their lives. But there are universal truths that I will acknowledge. And I think that's what's sort of missing because people have, unfortunately, definitely in comic books these days, put other stuff at the forefront and telling a good story is secondary acknowledging those universal truths are secondary if they are ever acknowledged at all. Rich Johnson says, this doesn't seem to be in conflict. What is important? What is important? Telling a good story or acknowledging universal truths. And if truths are universal, do they need to be acknowledged? Aren't they, by their nature, already acknowledged? And if someone thinks those truths aren't universal and doesn't believe in that, isn't calling something as a universal truth and putting it in the forefront of the story lecturing? No, no, universal truths like you shouldn't murder people. You should treat people nicely. You should have respect for your elders. Those are universal truths, and you can put them in your story without lecturing. That's called having good role models and setting a good example and why a lot of people like their kids reading comic books in the past. But comic books have absolutely become about lecturing. Go read DC. Go read Marvel nowadays. Is every comic book woke, infested with woke culture and lecturing everybody? Absolutely not. But a ton of them are. And they're so overt with it 
that it's very off-putting. And a lot of people have stepped away from comic books. Rich Johnston covers comic books. He talks to comic pros. He knows this. But because he's part of the little echo chamber there, he's not allowed to actually acknowledge what is staring him right in his face. Like I said, once you're part of this like weird woke culture, common sense and the truth that's staring you right in your eyes can't even be acknowledged anymore. There is a problem in comic books where the story has become secondary. This is entertainment. This is not supposed to be propaganda. People don't want to spend 4 to $5 a pop on propaganda pamphlets. It's just not a good business model, and that's why comic books are not keeping up with the peers these days. That's why they're getting absolutely blown out by manga, Scholastic, and all those other things out there. But Rich Johnson being part of the hive, he's got a lecture old Eric July. You're lecturing people. You, you're acknowledging universal truths. You're acknowledging that you should treat people with respect, that you should be kind to people. Oh, my goodness. Your, your comic book's all about lecturing. Like, Get out of here, man. In the past, these things were just common sense and everyone knew it. And they were backed up and bulwarked in the entertainment mediums that you viewed because they are universal truths. But there's nothing true anymore. <laughs> it's like the weirdest. It's like we're living in the goddamn twilight zone. That's what it is. And that's how you get stupid shit like this. Now, this last point he makes is somewhat there's some truth to this. I'll acknowledge that for old Rich Johnson before I say this one. There's also another question to ask. And stumbling across this accidentally last week caused all manner of ructions. Running a crowdfunder on Kickstarter or Indiegogo gives some measure of a surety of the pre-orders listed, but running a crowdfunder on your website does not. There is no independent voice to state that you got the orders that you say you do, so if you make a headline of it, how can that be verified? As it stands, the Ripperverse crowdfunder does not have verification. There is no independent source to confirm the order numbers, but it has been reported repeatedly without that caveat. Yes, he is running it on his own independent website, theripperverse.com, and that's where he's doing his crowdfunding instead of giving like 25%, 30% to Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So he's keeping his own profits, which I think is a dynamite, really smart business plan. Now, there's also some logistics that go into that. You have to be able to process PayPal and credit cards and all that kind of stuff, and you have to have a system in place you know, to uh, you know, catalog your orders and stuff and keep everything in order so that you can fulfill them. Obviously, he's gone behind the scenes and taking care of that himself, and he's taken that responsibility on himself and says, I don't want to use Kickstarter. I don't want to use any Google. I don't want to have to pay those outrageous fees. I want to keep the money that I'm generating for myself, so I will take on all the logistical stuff behind the scenes. Apparently, he's been able to take care of it. I do think there's been a snafu here or there behind the scenes, but everything is good up and running right now. But you really can't verify it. There's no doubting that unless you let somebody independent come in and verify those numbers, which I don't know why he would do that. Right now, he has his own website, which is a leg up on the competition. He doesn't have to give any of his revenue to a third party, which is really smart. So you can't really verify it. That is correct. Are you calling him a liar? Is that what Rich Johnson is doing? You've made a jackass of yourself enough already. Might as well just call him a liar while you're at it, Rich Johnson, because you're gaslighting the guy, you're twisting his words and all that stuff. Rich Johnson is an idiot, and Eric July is an enormous success with the Ripperverse and I saw him number one. If you'd like some more information about woke culture affecting entertainment and stuff like that, I had this conversation with RJ from the Fourth Age a while ago talking about how Woke culture is kind of destroying Tolkien and all that good stuff, even before it was popular to do so. This was before the Amazon show and all that. But this is a really good conversation. RJ is really well informed. Definitely check this out.